and welcome back. In this video, we would take a look at how do you get Kubernetes to work for you. So we would do a demo of uh, taking the Docker container that uh, you've already published or Docker image that you've published and use that to spin up containers in Kubernetes. So as was discussed in the theory portion of this, uh, of this content, the uh, Docker environment is great at uh, building containers. But to truly run production grade workloads, it's best to use a Docker hosting environment um, like, uh, like uh, Google Kubernetes engine or the open source Kubernetes running on uh, your own VMs or your own uh, uh, physical infrastructure. So we would, uh, in, this co in this lab, gonna, uh, we're gonna use the Google Kubernetes engine. But to do that, we need a few preparatory steps. So let's get started. So as before, I've uh, spun up my workbench instance. And I'm going to use that as my build environment. Um, so I've, I've actually done an SSH already into that machine. And once you get into that particular machine, you can go to the Docker version that you created last time around. And then look at the set of images that um, you've also published uh, uh, recently. So the most recent image should have been your Iris API image that you just created in the Docker uh, demo. So we're going to use this as the basis for spinning up the Kubernetes cluster. So before we do that, uh, we need to follow a few uh, enabling instructions. First up, go and enable Kubernetes Engine API on the Cloud Console. Uh, this would become evident if you go to your, um, yeah, go to your workbench and then type uh, GKE or you can type Kubernetes Engine as well. So if you've not enabled that API, the first screen that you see as soon as you look to go to GKE would be enable API. So click through that and then once it's enabled, you'll see a dashboard like this. Uh, separately, uh, go ahead and enable something called as artifact registry. Artifact registry is the modern uh, approach to managing a bunch of artifacts related to how uh, Kubernetes needs to be spun up, like into including container images, model images, uh, libraries, dependencies, etc. Any kind of artifacts necessary for running workloads on GKE. So artifact registry becomes what we use. Earlier it used to be called, I think, cloud registry, if I remember right. So let me go enable this. By the way, these enabling commands are run one time. So it doesn't matter where you run it from, you can run it from your cloud shell as well. Okay, so this is run successfully. Then I I want to go create a repository within Artifact Registry, which will house my artifacts. So this is the command for it. I've already created this. So go ahead and execute this on your own. So you'll be able to uh, look at all uh, artifacts that you publish of a certain type. In this case, the type would be Docker uh, formatted uh, images. And all of them would be available in this repository going forward. So this serves the need for creating a personal space for you to create your own artifacts that span all the you know work that you're doing in this project within Google Cloud account. Okay, so this is my repo. Uh, so that's been created now. Um, I also want to authorize Docker Central to be able to work with the uh, Docker local package. There we go. So it'll add these credentials. So from now on, I should be able to publish a few things. Docker images tells us which image is available. So the image that we are interested in is the latest version, um, latest tag for the Iris API image name. So we're going to use this image ID. It might be simpler. And we're going to uh, basically tag it that particular image into our uh, common repo. So Iris API latest into my common repo, uh, which is the artifact repo, my repo. And uh, I'm going to tag this as Iris API. That's the nomenclature I'm going to use within artifact registry so that anybody who uses or references this Iris API image in the artifact registry the artifact registry in turn knows where is that image available. Okay, there we go. So the tag is available. 
So now if I do a push, the push will make that particular image available in the artifact registry itself so that the URI resolves correctly. So this pushes that actual artifact uh, contents, the bytes. There we go. So it's usually published the checksum as well, MD5 checksum or SHA-256 checksum. So that's useful for us to expose as well as share with anybody else who wants to download this repo or uh, this artifact later on. So they can verify that they've got the same artifact without any man in the middle attacks or whatever. Anyway, um, let's come back here. Now we've got the image pushed into Docker. It's time for us to create the Kubernetes uh, deployment. Before we do the cre creation of the Kubernetes deployment, we have to um, create the cluster, the physical cluster in which that deployment will happen. So to do this, let's go back to the cloud console. I'm going to use the cloud console to visually create this so that you know how this works. So from within GKE, once you've enabled the APIs, you can go into clusters, click on create. So I'm going to give it a name. Uh, let's say, for instance, demo GKE Iris cluster. Region is US Central. I'll just leave it as it is. The standard tier is good enough. Um, if you want to do fleet registration and some of the more advanced topics um, like fleet, fleet registration, configuring, networking, etc., then you can take a look at that. But for now, we're just going to go past all of it. Uh, the cluster need networking, I'll just leave it as default. All of these are default options. There's no change. The advanced settings also, I'm not going to change. Okay, great. So now I'm ready to create. So I've clicked on create cluster. I hope, um, there we go. So this should all of us to bring up this cluster. Yeah, there we go. The cluster is being created. So we'll give it a bit of time. Uh, the creation of the cluster goes through three steps. Um, one is configuring, the other is deploying. In this case, it's deploying the GKE's own uh, infrastructure software, and then health checks to ensure that the cluster is running fine. By default, uh, the GKE cluster comprises of three pods, so that there is always some replication built in. So it's going to do all of those sequence of activities now as we wait for it. So the, there's a useful help, uh, you know, useful message that says that it's going to take five minutes or more. So let's give it that five minutes and then uh, we'll take a look again uh, on the health of the cluster. Okay, so the cluster was created successfully. Uh, it took a while, but then Eventually, it's gotten up and running. So we will now uh, deploy the Docker image that we have registered with Artifact Registry into this cluster. To, to do this uh, through the UI, uh, you can click on workloads. Like for GKE, all of these different types of containers that you want to deploy are uh, referred to as workloads. So you would use this workload feature. Click on deploy. It'll ask you what is the deployment name that you want. Let's say I'm going to do demo virus workload. Namespace is fine. Cluster that I'm going to demo uh, deploy and is actually already created, so it's helpfully just populated that, which is good. Next, um, the container details. Click on existing container image, and you can go select uh, from the artifact registry. So from within Artifact Registry, I've got my repo. And from within my repo, I've got Iris API. And from within Iris API, I can take a look at the latest image that was populated. Okay, I've made it uh, point to the right URI. So next up, you expose the deployment as a new service. Um, this allows the Kubernetes engine to create a load balancer. And then the load balancer sits in front of this entire cluster or set of pods but uh, exposes the service as a single endpoint. So this is useful. 
I'm going to let it let the defaults remain AT TCP load balancer type. Okay. So with that done, I'm going to just deploy and uh, we'll give it a couple of minutes for it to deploy the workload and then for the service to just come up after that. In the meanwhile, let me construct the curl command because now the IP address is different. Okay, let's wait for the IP address to come in and then we'll construct the curl command. So while that comes up, if you want to know what are all the steps happening in the back end, uh, you can obviously take a look at the logs from within the Kubernetes um, environment. So you can go to Kubernetes engine, go to clusters, and then look at the logs. The alternative is to uh, go through the command line. So here I'm going to go back to my workbench instance, and I'm going to make it uh, pick up the credentials for the specific cluster that I'm interested in. So the cluster that I am interested in, let's copy paste that name. That's this name here. Okay, then it will get the credentials for this cluster and make it available locally. So the cube context is also set up. Cube is basically the short form for Kubernetes. So the cube context is uh, set up uh, to use that particular cluster. So now I can use cube control or cube CTL, that's the command line, and look at the pods which are running within that particular cluster. So of the, th of the three pods, two are in running state, which is great, like the age is just two minutes. And the third one, the container is being created using the Docker image. So we'll just wait for a minute. Yes, there we go. So the pods are all running fine. Uh, if I want to know what the exposed service is, let's see whether that's being created. There we go. The load balancer is available. Um, set up on this demo virus workload service that we created. It's got an external IP address along with the port number and the age is just 81 seconds, which means it just got created right now. Great, so this is what we want. Let's go back to workloads from the console and ensure that everything is set up uh, correctly. So I'm clicking on workloads. Yeah, the status is okay. All three pods are up and running. The cluster is what we expect. With that, we have come to a close on this Google Kubernetes engine demo. So we've got it uh, set up with the ex uh, load balancer exposing the service as an uh, as an endpoint, and uh, you should be able to then query this. In the next um, uh, next week's contents, we would take a look at how to add more monitoring and um, health checks to this, so that the Kubernetes environment can keep the containers running, and that will help you uh, allow you to complete this lab by having the uh, application be healthy. And then you can use that as a basis for launching your own applications in the future by uh, adding the appropriate monitoring and health checks to your code. Thank you.